Hey, welcome back to another AxoCraft video. In this tutorial, I will be showing you five awesome ladybug features. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me keep making more videos. And uh, without, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so to start off, make sure you have your uh, Rhino model ready. I will be providing this one in the description below. And uh, beyond that, we will also be needing a few uh, basic components to start. So let's start off first with a file path, like this. And then go for an LB import. And go for the LB import EPW, which is the file type we will be using. You can then uh, connect, connect both. And uh, as, you, as you can see here, uh, the, the point of this component is to essentially uh, break down the, the file we will be placing into 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 our file path into its uh, various parameters. Beyond this, we will also be needing an analysis period here. Okay, and uh, in the, in this case, we will be we we will need to implement a start and uh, an, an, an end month, a start and end day, and of course a start and an hour in order to uh, create the uh, time frames we, we want to uh, analyze. So I'm, ju I'm just gonna, pl gonna place in a few values here. So double dash one, in this case for the, st the start month that will be January. And then I can also copy and paste this for the end month. I will just change this to uh, 12, which will be a December. For the start day and the start hour, I will also be using the uh, first day and the first hour of this month. And uh, in this case, for the uh, end day, I want to change this, maybe go for something like, uh, let's say, the 15th of uh, December. And for the end hour, I will, I will also go for uh, about uh, 3 p.m. In, in this case and now to get this operational we need to get ourselves the file and to do this we just need to go into this link here for uh, ladybug I will be providing this in the description below as well and uh, I will go in this case to the city of New York up here and I will be downloading this file here so download like that Hmm, odd. Well, I've actually download, downloaded it already, so I can find it in my in my download files. You will you will most likely also find it there as well. And then in this case, here, the file will be a zip file. And uh, once you once you extract uh, the uh, the files in here, you want to go for the EPW file, which I already have here. And uh, once you go back into your Rhino file, you can go into your file file path, select one existing file after right clicking, and uh, I'm gonna pick this one up, open, and now your basic setup is uh, fully operational. So for the first feature, I will be making a uh, Windrows analysis, and to do this, just write in Windrows. LB wind rows here, and uh, we can see here a lot of inputs and uh, and a lot of different outputs. And uh, in this case, I'm going to start off simple by uh, placing in its uh, north. And to do this, you just need to write to write in vector, right right click, and then go for sect one vector. And uh, I'm going to shift key this one and uh, select that one as my north. Place it into there. And as for my uh, data, in, thi in this case, you want to use wind speed and also wind direction into the wind direction input, like that. We can already see some uh, values here. Of course, we want to clear this out, this out a little, a, a little bit. So I'm gonna place in a point, which I will then place into the center point there. And now I will select my point here on the very left like that and uh, also I want to select a proper uh, period under which the the analysis is taking place so gonna go in like that okay looking good 
and um, beyond this here I, I actually want to make this a little bit more uh, visible because it's very small in comparison to my uh, model so we're gonna do something a little bit more tra traditional so scale and uh, in this case you want to place in your uh, mesh you also want to place in your title with your sh uh, by pressing your a shift key and your uh, legend and um, also you want to use your point for the, the center as well and in this case I'm going to use a number slider with a value of around 4 for the factor to make it a little bit larger and you can keep on adding uh, other elements as well so in this case I can also add in my uh, compass there to also make it larger and uh, in this case frequency lines can also be an option orient lines same 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 thing and um, yeah essentially this is how you can actually hide this here uh, yeah and this is how you set up a uh, simple wind speed analysis for the next feature I will be gathering uh, ra radiation values and then projecting them on a sky dome and to and to do this we want to go up here and get, and get ourselves a LB cumulative sky matrix bring it down down here and now we just need to start connecting in our outputs and inputs let's start off with our north let's bring in our EPW location right there and also we want to get ourselves a direct normal rad into our input there and also a diffuse ho a horizontal rad like that also, we want to get ourselves our um, hours of the year here as well. Now, this uh, a component uh, by by itself won't actually project anything. We we actually need to add in a sky matrix to allow us to do that. Uh, oh, pardon me, sky dome. Yeah, that's the one I'm I'm uh, looking for. Okay, and now we want to connect our our sky dome with uh, this one right uh, here, and uh, of course we also want to to move this over over here to be easier to see. So let's get ourselves a point. Let's right click and select one point, that one over there, and now let's place this in as our new center. Uh, I won't be actually messing that much with the scale because because I think it's uh, good enough as as it is and now we c we can see a uh, total radiation sky sky dome with all the inputs and all the necessary data for optimal building conditions okay now let, let's go into one uh, one of my favorites of uh, these uh, features the sun path let's uh, write in the sun the sun path and then go to the LB sun path over there and now same fashion let's let's get ourselves our uh, north our location our hours of the year like that and uh, we also want to get want to get ourselves our uh, center point so in this case I'm gonna grab in a new point and I will select that one over there and bring it into these to the center point uh, also beyond this we also want to get ourselves our uh, direct normal ra radiation and bring it down into our data like this so that the we can get our uh, different sun colors like that and and of course you can also move this this around to be at the very center of your of your of your building I just uh, prefer to have them out here, which makes them a lot easier to uh, read, like uh, that. And uh, yeah, so that's the uh, sun path uh, feature. Moving on, now we will be finally analyzing geometry. And to do this, let's uh, start off with the uh, direct sun hours. I'm going to be placing this uh, component here, and uh, in this case. I want to use the uh, vectors provided by the sun path up here on the top. So we're going to bring this down, down here. And now for the first time we, we will be needing both a geometry and a context. So I'm going to write in a uh, rep 
I will then copy and paste this uh, here. And um, I want to make this into a group. So like this, a control G. In this case, I will be naming this one geometry, which is our main uh, geometry actually. <laughs> And in this case, I will be naming this group um, context. Yeah. Okay. And geometry will go into uh, there and context into there. So now let's assign our geometry. In this case, I want this here to, to be our main building. And for the context, I will be selecting everything else. And of course, with your a control key simply deselect the main building. Press enter and now they are both set. Next up we need to uh, we need to go for our grid size. In this case I will get myself a number slider of around 10, bring it into there and uh, this uh, sometimes might get a bit heavy so uh, be careful on which number you choose. Uh, and now we also need ourselves a run so I'm gonna get myself a boolean toggle. I'm gonna bring it into there. And uh, now if I click true, it should work out. Okay, and it seems to have uh, worked. I'll probably just bring this value da down, down slightly to about six, make it a bit lighter. Okay, and now we, we uh, want to move these uh, values out and to do this we can get ourselves an orient like that and then we can add in the uh, mesh, the uh, legend oh, sorry, and the uh, title like that. Okay, and uh, for the source we actually need to get ourselves another point here and then set one point and there is a point under here at the very middle of the, the base of the building, which uh, I would I would advise using. And then we can use that as our source. And we can also use this point here as our uh, target. So let's get ourselves a point there. And select this one here and bring it into our target like that. All right, okay. So we have essentially all the values we need here, then we can, we can of course hide this. Yeah, and that's how we deal, we deal with our direct sun uh, hours on our building. And last but not, not least, for my last feature, I will be making a incident radiation analysis. To do this, let's just write an incident radiation like this and uh, let's get ourselves our sky matrix on the back over there let's also connect in our geometry and our context as well and for the grid let's also bring in our numbers down here like that and of course also our boolean toggle for our run okay now we can copy these values here and uh, in this case, we, we want to bring in our mesh, our legend, pardon me, and our title as well. And uh, let's change the target point to this one here. Okay. And uh, after hiding this, yeah, that's exactly how you set up these uh, five basic uh, Ladybug plugin features. Okay, okay guys, hope you've liked this uh, video. Please do not forget to like and uh, subscribe. It really helps me to keep these uh, videos going. And uh, I hope to see you back here next time. Cheers.